This holiday season, I felt like going for a sled ride. But not any sled ride. A ride on a do-it-yourself sled. For the materials that would make up this project, I chose steel. Steel is a unique building material with unparalleled strength and workability. The one price I paid in this project, aside from money, was weight. The total weight of the sled, if you are wondering, is 50 pounds. A fair amount, but my towing vehicle has more than enough power. The first step in fabrication was to cut the angles for the front plate. I decided the front would be at a 45 degree angle, and the sides and back would be at a 60 degree angle. As such, the front plate needed 60 degree angles cut into it. The next real step was of course welding on the front plate. This is one of the only times a freezing garage becomes an advantage. I find myself much more inclined to wear safety gear, even just a coat and gloves, when it's cold though. As such, winter has saved me from sunburns in more ways than one. Moving on, after the front plate was welded, I decided the rear plate was the next logical step. This also required 60 degree angles. Welding is really quite an interesting process. Mixing electricity, gas that can suffocate you, and molten metal together in one activity. You either don't like it, or you find endless satisfaction from it. To get the position of the parts just right, sometimes you have to hold on to the parts. And to position the gun and the welder just right, you have to hold on to the gun and the welder and be able to see what you're doing. So as a consequence, I'm using both my hands. So I don't have a hand to flip down my old helmet. So I just use the safety squints and close my eyes. As such, my face is still exposed. Not the greatest idea. I don't suspect this will be a problem anymore, as I recently got an auto-darkening helmet. Um, so no more sunburns for me, I guess. After welding on the first side plate, I cut off the excess steel. However, I lacked a steel plate long enough for the other side, so I just pieced it together using the angle plates I already had cut off as excess, and an additional plate to bridge the gap in the middle. Now, the sled doesn't get around on its own. Well, it does go down a hill, but where I come from, there is no such thing as hills, so I needed a method of towing it around. I decided on a simple hook and a tow strap, which I would craft from, well, that's correct, steel. Specifically, three quarter inch tube steel. Alright, so moving on to paint. They say paint prep is, well, 80% of the job of painting something. In most cases that's true, however, not in this case. I just had to give the metal a wipe down with lacquer thinner and pretty much ready to go. So as for the paint I chose, I chose your standard canyon black, you know, whatever, rustoleum, and then a clear coat in satin form, so what I would consider the usual. The final part of any sled, and arguably the most important, would be the actual surface that touches the ground. For this, I admittedly didn't give much thought. I chose a flat stainless steel sheet, which I installed via simple bolts. Now, I chose stainless because it is one of the harder metals, which should equate to a lower coefficient of friction, or lower drag. The stainless attribute is also helpful as it is exposed directly to the elements. Stainless might not have been the best choice as, well, a material like nylon, for instance, in a cutting board, would have lower friction and may last longer, possibly. Um, the stainless, however, worked perfectly fine on snow. However, on concrete, in certain situations, it did not, which I will get to in a moment. Okay, this is the current setup. So we got this 50 pound sled here. Attached via tow rope to the bike, for which I made a hitch. And, uh, hey dad, how much do you weigh again? A couple hundred. hundred. So probably a total tow weight of about 250. And a total bike weight of 
probably me on there plus the bike, maybe 250, something like that, 300. The bike's pretty heavy, but you know, so it's pretty much a split, and about maybe quarter of that will be on this rear wheel here, total weight. So traction is pretty sufficient. Um, so yeah, I suppose we'll get heading off. For the initial part of the trip, I just got my old man to sit down in the sled as I hauled us down some sidewalks. Something happened. I thought it was pretty funny, but I think my old man would have disagreed with that sentiment. He slipped down an incline. He seemed quite panicked, but I probably would be too if I was testing something like that for the first time. Relax, you're not going anywhere. Okay, okay. Oh jeez, alright. Huh? Get on the road. Oh yeah, okay. This is what I'm talking about. This thing needs some ability to steer somehow. I then went onto a bike path and we did a quick acceleration, like, and we drove by a camera. It was, wasn't the greatest as the bike seems to tend to take a while to get up to speed uh, with all that weight. So we probably only hit about 35 and we also had to slow down early because, you know, we had to brake pretty much right past the camera. Um, that night. The total trip that we made consisted of about 30 kilometers of bike path on a round trip. So 30 kilometers total. Um, it was a surprisingly comfortable ride in the back. The sled is nice and wide and the pillow soaked up most of the bumps. Near the midpoint of the ride I decided to haul my dad on the sled. This did not work out. The middle of the bike path was covered in concrete which only had very thin ice. It was dragging quite a bit. The bike still pulled him up about two kilometers, but the motor bogged out due to heat. The motor was too hot to touch, despite the negative 20 weather at the time. It proceeded to melt several large handfuls of snow before cooling down. After cooling down, I rode in the sled and we got home as normal. So I suppose hauling 200 pounds on top of a 50 pound stainless steel sled riding on top of concrete might be a bit too much to ask of my motor. However, the next morning I looked at my power consumption. Just for reference, aggressive driving with an average speed of 60 kilometers an hour will usually use about 35 watt hours per kilometer. Um, so hauling is quite power heavy. During the initial night of filming, both my phone and my GoPro died due to the cold. Uh, so I went out the next day for a top speed run again. This time we reached about 60 kilometers an hour on a mixture of snow and concrete. So not too bad at all. I had a lot of fun with this project. A lot of that was just in the looks that people gave from their cars at intersections. I almost wish I filmed that. One lady gave us this weird disappointed confused look. I swear it was the funniest thing I've seen in a while. One other thing of note, the day I took the sled to the bike path, my dad drove his car because it was minus 35. I took the sled on a mostly dry concrete road that was sanded. It was the loudest thing you've ever heard. People were walking their dogs and whatnot, but from 200 meters away, everybody would stop and look at this crazy guy riding his bike hauling a steel sled on concrete at 50 kilometers an hour. It was ridiculous. Thanks for watching. I usually like to complain about winter, but at least now I'll have something to look forward to. This was a lot of fun. If you enjoyed this video, I would appreciate a like and possibly a share, or you could check out some of my other videos. I'll see you next time.